welcome to this week's edition of The Passion of the Digital Artist. And here he is, the passionate artist himself, the Picasso of Pixels, Jeff Mueller! Boom! Way to go, Xavier. How have you been? I've been great, Jeff. How are you? I, I've been busy, 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 and I'm pretty happy overall. A lot, a lot has happened in the last two weeks. So we got a lot to cover, so we'll go get right, right into it. First well, why don't you start with what's behind well, you? Well, first off, I'd like to start off um, by thanking uh, Jack Thompson. Since the last video blog, the support that he's given me is just completely and totally amazing. Uh, so I'm going to, I noticed that my link on my website, for some reason, didn't lead to his book. So this week, The Color of Greed will be, the link will be back on there so you can see uh, and check out his book. Uh, once again, super busy, but I do plan on purchasing and reading his book in the future. Just at this point, the deadline, November 15th, is approaching really, really quick to finish off as much as, as of this series as I can. Now, with that said, uh, one of the things I wanted to uh, point out, I had bought a backup pen for my Wacom tablet, and it actually was the Artist Series pen, and anybody who uses a pen and is an artist, I would strongly suggest buying this pen. The tips that it comes with are just phenomenal. They're, they're, they've got different shaped tips, similar to different shaped brushes, and the feel that I was able to accomplish with this was just, uh, it, it changed what I was, how I was painting, allowed me to get a little bit more accurate what I was doing. Even though what I was doing with the old pen the new pen is just amazing. So I strongly suggest this to anybody who is painting or retouching or... What's the manufacturer on that? It's Wacom, Wacom tablets. I have an Intuitus 4. They came out with the 5. I'm kind of checking that out, but right now the 4 is working for me really well. Now that gets me to the printing, uh, the printing of Cape Cod Magic behind me. Uh, extremely extremely happy simply color outdid themselves uh, I was talking to Ro Rochelle Antoinette on oh, on uh, Twitter and we were talking about printing out uh, images and I had get when I got uh, serene marina it was a little bit dark and I was happy with it and I was gonna paint some detail back into it but I also went with printing another print, and I was going to use one or the other uh, as far as uh, a limited edition. It's, it's at this moment, it's, 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 it was good, but it just wasn't that final touch. So I'm not, I, I don't think I, what I'm going to do is I lightened it in the computer and reprinted that and got some amazing results. Now, when I was talking to Rochelle Antoinette about this, she said usually for her limited edition prints, to get the color right, it takes five canvas prints on canvas. So getting it in two, I'm extremely happy. Now, as far as Cape Cod Magic back here. Oh, wow. <laughs> Don't destroy the go. set. <laughs> here we go. As far as Cape Cod Magic goes, this painting, uh, once again, from concept to finish, the composition, and when I started painting this was in Cape Cod, I took a picture of this particular lighthouse. I knew where the lighthouse was. The position of that lighthouse was not conducive to taking a picture with the ocean. So I walked to the ocean from the lighthouse and there was some really, really nice uh, scenes and it was far back, probably way over here if it was in. So I took the pictures knowing I was gonna move the lighthouse into this position and get the picture. There's probably about 10 I cho chose from. But the sky that day was just phenomenal on the ocean, and it was just a beautiful day. The detail that came across and the amount of detail that I put into these bushes and the grass all came out in, into the print. Uh, I'm, I'm extremely happy with it. Uh, the, the way that the composition on this particular image, I'm, it just, there's certain things that make a painting, and the feel and the, and the 
the uh, whole uh, where the painting, as you look at it, takes you to the lighthouse, but then takes you, it'll take you away and bring you back and away and bring you back. It's just always because of the fact that it's left heavy with um, subject matter and the right side. But what I tried to do when I was painting this is have you be able to be on the left side, but keep taking you through the painting and taking you away, but not taking you out of the painting, bringing you right back to the lighthouse. So if you take a look at this composition and what's going on, it's kind of like an arrow pointing to the lighthouse, but the ocean leading you away, the grass leading you away, and all the angles. And, and you've got the, the strong angle, the horizon, the angle here, and the angle here. But then with this, as you hit the lighthouse, it, the, the angle's broken, but at the same thing, as you lead back to the lighthouse and the bushes, the angle's broken again, which creates a nice little balance. And when you look at it, it's very pleasing. So extremely happy with this. I'm excited. I will be painting when I paint on top of this. There's a lot that I can do as far as a little bit of highlighting in the bushes, really bringing out some more of that detail, and then playing with the shadowing a little bit to get it to do exactly what I want, and then making the lighthouse a little bit more dimensional. Right now, uh, what happens is right in this area, it's just a little flat for me. I want to bring, I think I got to bring a little bit of the highlighting of the bushes, which sets the lighthouse back, which then sets it behind. There's a couple things that I always do when I'm painting with acrylics that I'll do through this, and I, I'm sure the results. But once again, the print will be this. This is what you, if you ever see this, if I ever even, if I become extremely famous, what you'll see is the digital, on, in books or whatever, you would see the digital print, uh, the, the actual, just the computer print without the painting. Once I paint on the top, I create an original. As long as I live, <laughs> there won't be a copy of the original ever. If anybody asks for something, it'll be, the, it'll be a digital file of the digital painting without the actual um, detail put in through the acrylic. So I'm, I'm creating really a one-of-a-kind, a one-of-a-kind one painting. Whereas a lot of people, when they paint with acrylics, to get it into the book, you have to copy it and put it into the book. To get it in on in, you know anywhere or something, you have to copy it. But in this case, I'm not going to be copying the originals. The detail that I put in in a book or whatever isn't going to be. It's not going to. It's it, it's not a thing that would be noticeable. It would only be noticeable when you see it in person. Just like every single painting, when you look at it on a book or in a book, you look at that painting in the book. And it's just not, the painting itself is not, it just doesn't do it justice. So what happens then is once you're done and, and you, you actually finally get to see that painting, you just kind of like crap yourself. It's that, so much better. That is a beautiful, beautiful work, Jeff. You should be really proud of that. That is awesome. The, the level of detail on that grass, like I think I commented when you were, when this was in its early inception, I think that would you know just drive me batty trying to yeah. stay with that and get it all done, and that that's just beautiful. And the sky, you're right, the sky is captivating as is the ocean and the horizon. Yeah, and with, really nice. With that said, we're gonna go back to my my other craziness. So see. here we are. Yes, here we are. Now we're back at the, the computer station where I've been spending probably most of the last last three months every waking moment that i'm not working or doing family stuff this is where i'm where i where i am now i'm excited because i like to thank everybody for their input on naming the painting there were some really good names that i had gone over and i weighed in all of you i appreciate it and all the names were good but it came down to it just hit me i was sitting down having my cup of coffee at starbucks and it just hit me and I don't know why, my wife doesn't even like, doesn't think of it, but when, some, when you're naming a painting, and they all have to be named, I stress this, you need to name your paintings. When you're submitting to people, they got to have a name. There's no numbers, no, it, it's an, you got to name it. If you put this time, time and effort in, you got to name it, and I'm telling you, naming isn't the hardest thing because it usually just comes to you 
either at the beginning or in the middle. But by the time you, when you do something like this, by the time you're finished, you usually have a name. So I like to, the series within the Cape Cod series, which this is the second one. This is looking from after I had taken the first picture of it from the front side and walk down and take the picture from the opposite side. Although this, once again, this lighthouse does not exist in this particular setting, it's off on this beach, but off someplace else. So putting it in, I wanted to take a picture from both sides. So I, I'm sitting there drinking a cup of coffee and it just came to me far and away. So now I've got my Cape Cod series with far and away, this being away because I had passed it and I looked and it was away. And then as I was approaching, it's far. So it just made sense to me. So this painting is called Away. And the next one will be called Far. Far and Away. A, a little series or a little, uh, you know, series inside a series. So let's just take a look the way that I like to look at while I'm working, make sure I filled in. Uh, this is the actual painting right here. I so still, explain the the gray areas the gray, are what you faded out. Right, I took away the picture and stuck gray behind it, so you can see the painting, the actual painting that I'm doing. Um, as I do poor man zoom to get use, closer here. Using the the painting as a reference, this is the kind of coverage I'm doing. My gosh. Then you can see what's left. The lighthouse is still going. I've spent about 20 minutes on the lighthouse. The lighthouse is going to go. I'll be done with that tonight. But you can see putting into the lighthouse effects. Now I'll take away the gray and I'll show you taking away the lighthouse and just working on the little parts, adding in the detail, even even to the point where, you know, there's some areas that are blacking out and, and some areas that are not. And if you take it away, you can see I worked on this little section right here. And I it, even down to um, putting in more detail onto the actual fixture, the wrought iron, the wrought iron work. I'm putting, you know, I'm painting in what what's missing from the picture. Those are the kind of decisions while I'm painting this. Um, I make decisions to take rust off. I make decisions uh, where to make it feel a little bit more painterly, like in the sky. Here, you can see the clouds are a little bit more painterly on this one. And you can see initially if you flip back and forth. So I, I pretty much using that photograph, but then we'll just one last time, we'll take a look at my nutso. This is a detail on the grass. And if you take the grass away, you can see it brightens it up. But if you drop the, this is pretty much. You went in and painted, painted all those painted blades of grass. Every single blade of grass that there was. Oh my goodness! On the particular painting, and it took a long time. But I really believe, like in the detail of the bushes, the, uh, the detail that I put into this is going to be well, well worth it. Now I'll flip one more time, eliminating the grass. You can just see the brightness that becomes the painting. Wow. So I can't wait to get this one. This one should, late this week I should order it before Friday. And sometime next week I'll have this one and the three. I'm going to probably pick one of the three. Um, I've already got an extra print on Serene Marina. So I will probably pick either Away or um, Cape Cod Magic to make another print. And then working towards the other one. And then what will happen is the last two in the series. Um, I'll wait for another sale <laughs> for um, Simply Canvas and purchase another two for the last two canvases. But this has been a blast. I know this week went a little bit long, but I think it, there's a lot that went, went, went into this video blog this week. Lots of packed information. I think things went well. They did. And I'd also like to add my uh, heartfelt thanks to Jack Thompson and Rochelle Antoinette for their support and input. We really appreciate it. Yes, definitely. Completely appreciate it. And then on a better note, the Packers are six and three. Go pack. Go <laughs> and, pack. And the Pittsburgh Steelers beat the New York Giants today. <laughs> yeah, so which stay. not that you're a Steelers fan, it's just that anytime well, anybody beats the New York Giants. Giants yes, and it was good to see. Yes, <laughs> yes definitely. So uh, throw that little bit in there. Until next week you'll it should be finished. It should be starting far, and we should be on our way. Take care, folks.